yes, I put a Stephen King book on this list. I think I may have enjoyed it more if I'd picked it up before reading a bunch of his other works. Hello everybody, happy Frog Friday. My name is Carly and these are the top 10 most disappointing books that I read in 2022. These books are in no particular order. First up is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. The main character, Kaya, has grown up in the marshes of North Carolina all by herself ever since she was, I think, five or six years old. She was left alone. The people of the town refer to her as Marsh Girl and don't see her as one of their own. So when a town member is found dead, everyone immediately starts accusing Kaya. Throughout the whole book, you're trying to figure out the mystery of how this man died. However, it spans throughout her entire life, so you're also just following her growing up. One of the main parts of that is Kaya having to choose between two main love interests. These love interests are one of the things that annoyed me the most. The author clearly writes one of these people as the good guy and the other as the bad guy, but they're both horrible people and don't treat her right. I personally hated the ending and thought it defeated the whole point of the rest of the book. The one thing I did appreciate was the marsh atmosphere that the author creates with her descriptions of the nature and animals living around Kaya, but I think that might be one of the things that most people don't care about as much in this book. Next up is a classic, We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. After their entire family is killed by poison, the few remaining family members must live isolated from the rest of the town in their house because the members of the town think that one of them was responsible for murdering their family. They seem perfectly fine with this isolated lifestyle until another cousin comes to visit them and stay at their house. There's a feud between this new cousin and our narrator. Throughout the book, you're trying to figure out if they really killed their family members or not. This book is one of the things that I think about when I think about Halloween, and it's just a fundamental piece of literature for the horror genre that many other authors take inspiration from. It's a book beloved by many, but I was just bored by it the whole time. I think this is somewhat my fault because I had already watched The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Bly Manor on Netflix, which are TV shows that I highly recommend watching. They're great. While these shows are loosely based on We Have Always Lived in the Castle, they follow a completely different storyline. Since I love the show so much, I found myself comparing the book to it. So I found myself bored by the book because the show has a much more in-depth and complicated storyline. I also was not scared or creeped out by the book at all. Next up is Carrie by Stephen King. And yes, I put a Stephen King book on this list. Our main character, Carrie White, is a high schooler who has been raised by her religious fanatic mother and has been bullied all throughout her time in high school. She finds out that she has telekinetic powers, which she uses to get revenge on those around her. I knew nothing about the story of Carrie going into the book because I had never read the book before, and I had never seen either of the two adaptations, the older one or the newer. The only thing I knew about this book was that iconic photo of Carrie in the prom dress with the blood all over her face. Being such an important part of the horror movie genre and being King's first published work, I had very high expectations for it. I was a little bored by the story and I think I may have enjoyed it more if I'd picked it up before reading a bunch of his other works. I didn't even feel particularly horrible for Carrie. Sure, she has a crazy mom and people shouldn't be bullying her, but that's not an excuse for what she decides to do in the climax of the story. Next up, we have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Our main character, Viv, is an orc barbarian who decides to leave her life of fighting and settle down by opening up the first coffee shop in a town called Boone. You follow the building of this business with the friends and possible love interests that find her. It's a low stakes fantasy book that's just a little too low stakes for me. It's one of those no plot just vibes books. So it's not bad, I just think it's not for me. Which is disappointing because I only hear of people loving this book. Next up I think is probably the most polarizing book on this list and that's Normal People by Sally Rooney. This book is all about the complicated relationship that friends Connell and Marianne have. They live in Ireland and they start their relationship in secret in high school. At the time, Connell's a really popular kid and Marianne is kind of a loner. However, when they both end up in the same college, things have switched. Now Marianne has a thriving social life and Connell is struggling to adjust to college. This takes place over multiple years of their lives, diving into the complicated feelings that come about when they see other people but always end up coming back together. It's an on-again, off-again relationship that's full of miscommunication. I feel like this is one of those books that people either love or hate. 
It either works for you or it doesn't. I tend to not care much about romance or relationship plot lines in stories, so I wasn't expecting this to be a new favorite, but I was still hoping to at least like it. One major complaint that people tend to have, and that I definitely have, is that the author does not use quotation marks at all, even though the entire book is basically dialogue, so you just kind of have to get used to figuring out who's talking. Next up is Circe by Madeline Miller. You're following Circe, who's a half-mortal, half-god. Zeus feels threatened by her power, so he banishes her to a deserted island where she spends her life practicing her powers and coming into contact with some of the most famous people in mythology, like Odysseus. It revolves around the complicated feelings of her not knowing whether she fits in more with the gods or the mortals. It's a retelling that tries to give Circe's point of view because she's generally described as a villain in Greek mythology. I think retellings are just not for me. I'd rather dive into a new storyline than something I'm already familiar with. But if you like Greek mythology and retellings don't bother you, then I think you would really like this. I couldn't put this on the worst books list because objectively it's very well written and it has beautiful prose. Next up is Everything I Need to Know I Learned in the Twilight Zone, A Fifth Dimensional Guide to Life by Mark Dawidziak. That is a unnecessarily long name, first of all. <laughs> As a kid, I loved watching both the Twilight Zone and Alfred Hitchcock present shows, so I immediately put this on my TBR when I found out about it. It has, I believe, 100 short chapters. Each chapter provides a life lesson from the show and a few episodes that teach this lesson. So it's not going over each individual episode and picking one lesson out from it. It's picking lessons and then fitting episodes to it. So some episodes are repeated and some aren't discussed at all in this book. It also involves guest lessons that the author is quoting from various uh, directors, actors, writers that have a relationship to the show. This wasn't horrible, it was just pretty dry, honestly. It had way too much history and background on the show. So for example, they would introduce a producer and then they would talk about every single project the producer was involved in before or after the Twilight Zone, which I did not necessarily care about because I didn't know who these people were. I was just there for the lessons and the nostalgia. The last three books are just honorable mentions because I have already put them in my worst books of 2022 video and I don't want to double up on them. These three books are Two Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara, First Person Singular by Haruki Murakami, and The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And that's all of the books. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Comment down below what your most disappointing books of 2022 were, or whether or not you agree or disagree with the books that I've put on my list. For today's frog fact, I will be talking about frog eyes. They're not just for seeing, they're also for eating. When frogs swallow food, they actually pull their eyes down onto the roof of their mouth to help push the food down their throat. Just imagine if we did that, that would be wild. Thanks again for watching, I hope you all have a great day, goodbye.